the man of the hour, and that would be Anthony Crichelli. He's going to pop on here any minute, and we're going to get to talk to him all about the he, hustle man. The he, hustle man. That. Hey everybody, we are. We are just waiting for the man, the man of the hour. And that would be Anthony Crichelli. He's going to pop on here any minute, and we're going to get to talk to him all about the he, hustle, man, that has been happening for the last six weeks. We are going to go back a little bit past six weeks to talk about our connection to this cool cat. And but, there he uh, is. I Hello. Think we have him. He's waving. Okay, and now we're waiting. Happy Thursday. Right? Happy Thursday. Just waiting for that request, Anthony. <clears throat> okay, and I wave to him. We'll see what's happening here. <laughs> All right, here we go. go. Yes, please. <clears throat> hey! What's up? What's up, guys? Oh, I miss you. <laughs> How are you? We're so good. I'm gonna turn you up a little bit. Get you ready right. to get You ready to get turned up? I'm ready to get turned up. All right, let's go. Let's can go. You hear us good? You can hear us? I can hear you. You guys sound good. We, yeah. You sound good too, buddy. Well, listen, everybody who's uh, kind of joining us now and joined us about three to four minutes ago, welcome to the IG live interview with Mr. Anthony Crichelli. Now, now listen, we're, we're gonna get to the title that we've given you later, because it could be a book deal. <laughs> so we'll get to that later, okay? But we are the Masters Fitness. This is Carrie Ann Sullivan. I am Chan Ganaway. We are of the Masters Fitness, a consulting curriculum building, 40 plus focus training and programming, you name it. We've been around the block a little bit, about 50 years total uh, between us in the fitness industry. Between and, us, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Actually, she's younger than me and has more years in the industry than me. So, hey. Because hey. I started when I was 12. Listen, I didn't get to your, <laughs> I was going to ask what you wanted for your walk up song. So, I'm sorry. Next time. Yeah. Oh, my goodness. I Next love time, it. Because I, I know you it. have one, like, ready. <laughs> you're, you're my music man. But listen, guys, I, I wanted you to know why did we go after Anthony uh, for this interview? Because this guy has an incredible uh, history in New York City being an elite trainer. And then what we really want to focus probably 90% of this interview on is what has happened since the shutdown. And that's where Anthony really showed his true skill, his true celebrity status, his ability to network and bring people together. And so really, we want to really dive into that because I think the listeners and the viewers, if they're kind of into the new virtual space, they're going to learn a lot from you today. Yeah. Okay. So anyway, Carrie uh, and I have some questions for you. How are you doing? Catch us up on you. Yeah. What you mean? Yeah, I'm good. Uh, outside of fitness, I'm, I'm doing well. Me and my roommate are here in Hoboken. Uh, my folks are in that 65 plus range, so I couldn't go home. Uh, so it's just been kind of virtual calls and FaceTimes. My mom knows how to FaceTime now, which is kind of great. Um, and then just like I, I said this before, I used to pivot off of like when people used to send me a text that said hope all is well. And I would say, OK, well, that text is going to take a while for me to actually respond because I want to like actually see how they're doing. Right. So now I just FaceTime them and I'm right. able to actually genuinely catch up with people, which has been hard. Um, yes. Yeah. So yes. Those hope all is wells. Once you actually get this, you actually get to see like, hey, that hope all as well wasn't really four letters. It was like, I've got a lot of stuff going on and I just needed to vent and I need to like communicate with you. Oh, that's a yeah. great point. Yeah, no, great point. I feel like um, I feel like I've spoken to people I haven't spoken to in a long time. Yeah. And we were just talking to Roger, um, yeah. Roger yesterday. Yeah. And great interview, but um, he was kind of doing what what I've been doing, which is like reach out to like five people that you know, we're in your past, or you just haven't connected with them a little bit. And it doesn't take a lot of time, but it's kind of about creating those connections, right? Yeah. And recreating and kind of checking in. So that's kind of cool. So yeah. anyway, but you're good overall. And we'll get to the professional part in a minute. Yeah, but, uh, you know, I'm, yeah. I'm good health wise. Like I actually funny enough, I had a talk with a nutritionist the other day. And I was like, I'm just, I'm not eating as much. And they were just like, well, you're not 
your energy output is just nowhere near what it normally is. So if you're not as hungry, that's perfectly fine. And I was and like, are you I'm getting, sure. are you getting full like on half a sandwich and you're like full? Yeah. I'm just like, I'm barely eating lunch and then I have a dinner and then that's it. Like I'm not even breakfast used to be a thing that was like kind of like forced because I was out the whole morning and I'm just not exploring that anymore. Well, it's really interesting before we got on, I don't know if it's the mom in me, but I was like, I wonder if he's eating. I seriously <laughs> was just thinking that, which is probably why everyone calls me the mom, like of the, good. Of the grip good. fam. I'm like the mom, mom. yeah. You're doing so, okay, mom. I am, doing I am. Okay. Just You're checking in on you. Listen, we want to we dive in, man, because I know we've only got 25, 30 minutes here. Look, let's go back to real quick. We need to give them the 60 seconds of how we're connected. And there was a project that popped up for Carrie and I going back to December of 2018 when we uh, met with the ownership team and the family of Bill Zanker and Diva Zanker and Dylan Zanker, who eventually launched Grit Boxing. And we'll get to that in a second. But that project, about six months later, maybe five months later, brought us to Anthony, yeah. who came through like a raging bull yeah. and basically took the reins. And once Grit Boxing launched just off Union Square, East uh, 16th Street, um, he really quickly found his legs and became a master trainer and a leader of that team in New York while we were the curriculum developers and the master program and workout developers. So we've been connected to Anthony very, very closely, probably since last April, yeah. kind of all the way forward. And about Grit Boxing, they just came off the most successful month that we had had. Yeah. Incredible timing, the most workouts we had ever seen, revenues were great, the trainers were busy as hell, and then boom, right? I yeah. mean, it really, it, it wasn't like a month delay, it was like greatest month in grid history, boom. Yeah. And that's where I wanna get to you. How did that impact you, that moment? What were you thinking and how did that impact you, brother? Yeah, so that was an interesting time because it was, other studios were shutting down slowly, so I kind of was in the loop of what the pre-COVID things were happening, and because of where, you know, we are in our positions, I, I really was talking to upper management all the time, kind of like, okay, so what's the next step inside of capacity, and how do we make sure that this is cleaned, and do we add a break in the window? Do we go to taking two classes off the morning, two at night? You know, nobody really expected or knew the magnitude of how COVID was gonna hit studios. And then slowly but surely you saw studios closing. And then when it closed, I wanna say within like 12 hours, I was like, okay, I'm gonna pivot. I'm gonna go online. I'm just gonna talk to people and get communication going and kind of just provide some kind of content to get people moving. Whether yeah. it was, you know, a crazy workout or just something simplistic, it was, all right, how do I get you moving so you're not entirely focused on this pandemic? And that could be, as simplistic as just jumping jacks, but right. yeah. You know, I, granted, that's what I wanted because a lot of people, I think when this happened, and, and I think I'm correct in saying this, they kind of waited to come up with a game plan and two uh, weeks later, they kind of maybe found their game plan and then everybody said, oh wow, everybody's using Zoom. Well, hell, that was like three weeks after it already shut down uh, and everybody, but you, you just acted, and that's why we labeled you the master of fitness hustle, because it literally did not take you 24 hours to go, wow, this is significant. We don't need a perfect plan. We just got to get freaking busy. Right. Is that correct? Yeah. yeah, and I think it was also, I just kept seeing so many stories that were just so hard. I don't want to say negative, but they were just like, they were just heavy stories that people were posting. Like, I'm terrified. So I said, okay, well, like, when I'm scared, I need to just move. And right. what happens inside of movement is, as much as I don't forget about what's happening in the moment, I'm able to release some kind of toxins that are going right. on. So I was just like, let's create movement. And from there is where kind of this group of 10 people that I work with now came out of nowhere. It was like everybody from every gym that was like, hey, I wanna, I wanna speak and I have something to say and I resonate with these people is how we got this diverse group of individuals who were like, okay, let's just create movement and create community. And we're definitely going to get there in just a moment. Yeah. So, so Carrie has one for you as well. Uh, so basically, was it your plan or were you like kind of figuring out? But I, I feel like you already just said it. Like where basically people were, you didn't know. You just said, I need to move. And true to you, which is what I love about you, is you are a connector. Uh, you are um, you're a connector of people. 
and um, you, you build a community. So you used to do that at Grit. For sure. But now I feel like you've done that virtual space. But yeah. did you have that in the background or did you just jump? Quickly before you answer. Yeah. We, want, we want you to lead that, uh, the answer into the free content, the donation-based content, moving over yeah. to free-based content. Oh. If you can kind of walk us through that 100%. as well. 100%. I, mean, I, I think I think at the gate, I just was like, let's move. And there wasn't a price point to it because I was like, okay, people are going to be budgeting differently. People are also going to be working with different limitations, right? Like I, I know so many of my clients who were just like, now I'm home with my kids. So yeah. I don't have the second to think about like what to do. I just need to move. So right. at the beginning, I kind of was like, all right, let's create community and just create some kind of movement. And then from there... I realized that everybody, the minute I would scroll on my live in the morning, everybody was live. And I was like, this is great. Great that we're offering movement. But then how do we pay our bills at the end of the day, right? Unemployment in New York was just like, we could not even get on it. So right. for me, I was like, okay, well, I'll start donation based to start. I'll start in a donation setting that's just like, hey, if you want to be able to contribute to this, awesome. And if you can't, then like, that's okay too. You, you work with what you can work with. And I found people starting to give. And then... What I did essentially on my end and my, the team that I work with and is said, okay, we have this great product. We're offering 45 to 50 minutes of content and donation. What if we gave that free content, but in a 15 to 20 minute quick fix window, and then if people wanted more, they could contribute to a class setting on Zoom that's private and password protected. So we went from 45 minute IG lives to 15 to 20 minute IG lives. And those kind of just kept traction going that then transitioned that into the Zooms. No, I think that's good. You showed value. You showed incredible workouts. You showed intelligence, hustle. You, you were giving them something of value, and they had to decide after seeing some of the free or donation-based content. And then you shifted to fee-based. Can you walk us through that point? Yeah. So the fee-based goes in a ton of different variations, too, because I've seen people charge as high as $30, and I've seen people charge as low as $3. And I think it's kind of one of these things where I said, I came – together with the 10 people that I'm working with at the moment. And we said, okay, as a team, let's pick a number. And over time, you know, you can create lock-in rates and you can do, hey, if you come to this class on Monday, you get the one on Wednesday for X dollars. And it really kind of is just, I created a, a baseline number. And then I said, okay, well, if you come to class on Monday at 7.30 a.m. and you wake up at the ass crack of dawn to work out with me, yeah. I'll give you Wednesday for half the price. And it was just wow. little things like these and these incentives. Um, and that's really how it went. I kind of just saw the market. I, I know people who charge $3 a class but have 800 people. So they're making over $2,000 a class. Yeah. You know, and that's the, the really cool thing. And that's I, I said, you know, That's actually, that's really kind of like the beginning of, of group exercise. It yeah. really started with, hey, just pay us. Way like, back. Anthony, way back. You were four. Yeah, but, or, yeah, <laughs> but, but really kind of people were crushing it they were making a lot of money back then yeah. because they were getting 50 people 100 people maybe well, the, two health to clubs, three dollars. the health clubs back in the late 70s early 80s actually launched group fitness there was not a room in most yeah. health clubs right and so to do that they would just have like a five dollar drop in a bucket but you might have 40 people in class now this is yeah. going back 35 making years money. dude i know so some of these instructors believe it or not Back in the day, we're making two fifty an hour. It's yeah. incredible. Yeah. Um, Philip Mills actually did a wonderful lecture yeah. at yeah. FIBO and was telling us what these people were making in Europe, teaching group exercise in the late 70s, just mind-blowing. But they were also what it is today in New York specifically is that kind of that rock star elite status. You know? Yeah. What I mean? So I do want to ask you now. Um, so it's been, what, six weeks? Six weeks, yeah. So crazy. Uh, it's a little mind-blowing. So we were all... Now we're in Florida, our space is a little bigger. And so yeah, I'm right. kind of empathizing right now for the people. And I've stayed in, I've, we've stayed in plenty of places in New York over the past year and a half, right? Yeah. And so I know the restrictions. There's not a lot of space. It's not yeah. like you can run outside. So you're, run, you're running into some creativity barriers. Like what, what do you, what do you really work around with, with your, with your clients and your members? Yeah. With, Space. So, like how do you work around that? Design. Program I've design. always, yeah, my design program has always been simple, effective, and articulate. So if I can get people moving in an AMRAP to EMOM setting and knowing exactly what they're doing, they're gonna follow along. You know what I mean? I think it's what I straight away from was like 
crazy compound movement, crazy like power lifting stuff. I teach a strength class, but it really is simplified. So it's like kind of bare bone strength based movement. So what I was, I said, okay, instead of getting crazy, especially from a digital platform where you might not be able to get all the cues, let me make it simple and effective. Let me work people through volume control, which is another thing that we can also get into with what you see in online workouts. Round one starts with burpees and my mind is always blown. But uh, yeah. Uh, yeah. I commented on that the other day. I'm like, what the hell? 50 burpees as a warm up? Start. Really? Just start. Really? You know, yeah. There's a great guy. If you guys don't follow him, I, and I don't mean to plug him, but this guy, Ryan Hopkins, he, he runs Soho Strength Lab. Um, he's a genius when it comes to fitness. And he posted like, he literally was like, what are people doing? Like, why are we blowing out our joints? Like 90% right. of these workouts. Um, well, I mean, and we're all stressed anyway. Yeah. So yeah. like, you know, our bodies, we're not sleeping well. A lot of us, I mean, some are, some are sleeping like babies, but I mean, just to, keep compounding. Just to keep compounding all well, the stress to your body where, mentally, physically. Yeah. It's kind of where like you guys have built the programs at Grit so that people can go multiple times a week. That's what I'm doing on my platform. So that yeah. you get a person who pops in once a week and it's like, well, I can't take that twice a week. It's like you build the programs effectively so that people can grow over time and don't kill themselves every workout. Well, and then the coaches help out by well, making sure they don't. Well, that's true. Yeah. That's true. But I, but I think it's a great point. If you're somewhat maybe new or maybe even not new to virtual training space, which we'll get to in a minute as well, it, the big sexy stuff is great to make you an Instagram star. But if you really want clientele that are willing to pay, it needs to be challenging, but very doable and progressive in nature. Would you yeah. agree? Absolutely. I think it's like, that's why I always offer options inside of workouts, which is the terminology that you guys have instilled in me. Sure. But it's really true, right? I'll give a bare bone foundation workout. I say, here's option A. If you want to progress this, great. And here's option B. So you don't feel lost and you feel defeated. We're going to still be able to move during this time, but I'm going to give you multiple options so that you don't feel like you need to click out of the room. It's that everyone feels seen during this time. Absolutely. Well, you just said that. So everyone feeling seen. I think what I, I feel from what you're doing is when we were in grit grit was an amazing workout amazing lights music everything but it was more than that and you talk about this all the time it's the community right it's the culture that's that you've created and so do you feel like that's what keeps people especially now coming back they just want to be seen heard and connect and yeah, I love so what you've done that's that's kind of been the cool thing too. It's like, I have a group of girls in the morning on Mondays who are like the breakfast club, you know, like those are the people who still, they've met through online this, they've met through this. Like, Hey, I saw your name in the zoom. I added you on Instagram. Now we can be now they're hitting each other up. Yeah. yeah. Same thing. Right. So I think more or less, like, it's just understanding. I said, somebody said the key is knowing your clientele. Yeah. It's, it's that 100%, but also making sure that your clientele inside that zoom meeting, introduce people. Hey, I'm going to give you guys two minutes of a stretch and look at somebody else's tag and feel free to add someone or somebody write a funny question and we can connect. Like that's more or less what I'm doing now in the sweats connect aspect is like, Hey, after this, like some people, a lot of people have been like, yeah, hey, let's drink after this. I'm kind of like, Hey, let's cool down. Right. So like just to plug this <laughs> yeah. in, I just hired a stretching company to work with me that after my workouts rack stretch, which is a company in New York, they're right. going to take over the zoom and do the cool down. So it's I a love it, Anthony. properly stretch fantastic workout because you know how it is. Like I bust my ass, I work out, then I'm going to sit on the couch and then what? Like you're just going to lock up your body for two I days. Like, taking that time in the cool down, like let people connect, look at different screen names, see who's well, let's the talk cat. about. Sorry, Anthony, let's talk about what that means because when you collaborate and you go to the experts in their own niche, right? So yeah. you're, you're gonna be 90% of it. You're gonna be 90% of the workout design, the energy, the enthusiasm, the connectivity part, but doing little things like that collaboration, what did you just do? In essence, you just quadrupled potentially your viewership because now they're being tagged. Now they're being brought into the mix with their clientele. Is, is that the way you view it? Cause that's a good business decision. Yeah. Well, what I learned during COVID is that I don't always have the right answers, right? Like I, as much as I might be educated, somebody might not resonate with me. So that's kind okay. of why I brought on a group of a bunch of different people so that I, if I don't have the answer, somebody on this team might, of and course, somebody might of resonate course. with somebody in that stretch. Right. And that's fine. Because at the end of the day, I used to, I talked about this last week, like I used to hold on to clients 
because of a fiscal thing like no don't leave me because you're money right as opposed to just being like hey listen if i don't have the answers i know somebody great and i know that if i let this go you're going to tell somebody about this moment it's like a liberty mutual commercial is how i yeah. draw it right so like da, da, that's what I want this time is that like i don't have all the answers but if i can bring people in who know their stuff then there's just trust and at the end of the day, trust is what is gonna let me at 65 years old sit on my deck with a beer and like be happy. You know what I mean? Yes, that's so true. So I got 12 years to go. Okay. <laughs> 12 years. Yeah. <laughs> so listen, hey, look, you just led me into the next question. Yeah. Give us the quick, the quick version if you want, the long yeah. version if you want. How did you bring these people together? Yeah, so um I have met all these people throughout New York in like the last two years. Everybody's from different gyms. So people from Switch, from F45, from Performance House, from Grit, from I Love Kickboxing, from uh, every gym, a, a ton of gyms inside New York. Uh, what happened was we all were just like, hey, like you're great at that. Do you want to just come teach on this? And then somebody else is like, yo, my friend does this. And we created 10 different workouts by 10 different trainers with a split male to female ratio of all ethnicities. Oh, yeah. Kind of like where the next thing goes into is that like we LLC the company last week and there's a lot of big things that are happening. Um, but it's just we we know that there's a there's a huge market for people to feel seen and a ton of diversity can be put onto a platform. Uh, so well, that that's that's really trust. interesting too because you it when in the New York space, which is it's a different beast. It is a different animal. I, I mean, I yep. can't really. It, I can't. The, you really can't put it in words. I can't put it in words. Yeah. Uh, but what I love about it is that it is a tight network. And whereas there's one trainer at this gym, they may work together at another gym. It's not, you know, gym against gym or studio yeah. against studio. There is, but not a lot. And everyone kind of, you're fitness stars, right? It's, it, you're talented, ambitious, good looking and great shape but there's more to that it's like the whole package in new york so i just love to see that and i love what you've done to recruit everybody and that you're able to kind of uh highlight different trainers now they don't have a home the homeless yeah. trainers <laughs> well you know so, what? leaders look leaders lead I'm sorry anthony no, leaders no. lead and you know it's in your dna you don't know how to do it any other way um, I don't think you do. And I think that's really what we are here today is, is watching an elite trainer who is not dog eat dog competitive, but really being a leader. And I appreciate that about you, sir. Right. Thank and you. how that translates now to the non New York area. What I love is um, that, you know, people can take a little bit of what you're saying and maybe create their own thing where they're There's no working question. off. Of you can do office. this. You can do, you can repeat what you've done on some scale, whether it's five trainers or 20 in Dallas, Texas and Houston, Texas and San Diego, California, it doesn't matter. You yeah. can do what you did now. It takes hustle, it takes yeah. a network, it takes being well liked, it takes respect, it takes credibility, right? Yeah. If you wanna do this long term, you gotta have credibility. Yeah. Short term, yeah, you probably don't need credibility, but long term, yeah. you need For it. Long term. But, but listen, Carrie needs to ask you, what is question four? Go, baby. Oh, well, you did first say that word hustle, and it made me really think about what oh. his name was. That we the coined Fitness it. Hustle. So yeah. this is the, the book deal. This is the book deal. All we want, all we want is 10% of and the full A Obviously, little bit of the full word. The Master <laughs> of Fitness Hustle. The, yes. It's a great book cover, dude. AC, Master of Fitness Hustle. And look, we have this as a recording, so don't be trying to, you know, pull it <laughs> like New York shenanigans. Yeah. Okay. Um, all right. So basically, any advice for trainers coming in now during this or uh, for the first time possibly training online? Yeah, I think it's just figure out who you are first. So I said that a lot. Like I, I discovered a lot about me throughout this time, stuff that I kind of was like, I need to force myself to get uncomfortable in certain settings. So sometimes, Chen, and you guys both know this, I'm more of a linear person, right? Like I'm kind of like, all right, let's go. And sometimes I needed to move lateral. And I had some people who said some really great things to me. It's like, I had to get comfortable moving in an uncomfortable space. Mm -hmm. And I think because we have so much time now, you can do that, right? So you yeah. can say, hey, I might not know something, but I have the time to research it. And that's going to elevate me to get in that one person who was kind of scared of working with me before. I think it's also good to just be honest with yourself and say, hey, if I want to do this, then 
let's do it. Like, let's create community and don't worry about the other people who are driving next to you. Con control yourself in your lane because if you open your doors too much and you start swimming those lanes, you're going to get off track and you're going to be chasing things that other people have different gears and engines that they're already working with. Great so advice. Stay in your lane. Like, there's nothing. And that's what I've learned. I used to be like chasing a V8 engine of a trainer who is a role model to me that I'm just like, why am I chasing this engine that my car is not even built all the way yet? I got to fix the parts in my car to stay in my lane. And that's right. fine. And then look, a distracted driver drives like crap. You know what I yeah. mean? Like, you, gotta <laughs> kind of, <laughs> you know what I mean? But it really yeah. is true though. But, but it is very easy for someone who is new to anything, fitness or not, to feel like they need to follow this or follow that. You can learn some of the basic modeling from someone, yeah. but ultimately, if you're not genuine to yourself, you know what happens, right, AC? Yeah. Well, you just get lost. Like the you car, do. the car goes into an autopilot that you don't have control over. So, right. and you need like a dog chasing his tail after that. This has been a lot of change for the fitness industry, and like, like he said, like I've been in it since leg warmers were popular the first time. <laughs> Right? Jeez. That's a Jeez. long time. That's a long time. Wait, but I think I did. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And I don't know. I hope they bring back the thong and shiny pants. No, nope, Anthony. <laughs> Just say no, Anthony. I think it'll be great. Nope. Yeah. Anyway, but I, I, I think we're used to this ebb and flow and the change of the fitness industry. But this is this is this a is new different. Piece. Yeah, this is no. different. This isn't like uh, a new training principle or a new modality. This is a new way of surviving financially and trying to do it the right way, right? Well, I think it's like you're going to find people now moving into, and which is what you know I'm moving into is going to be this hybrid, right? Like you have to have the brick and mortar and the hybrid. And yeah. I think what's going to happen 90% of the time is that people have bought so much equipment through COVID that if they're ever on the fence of like, hey, I'm running late to this class and I don't want to spend the $36, which is in New York, the normal price, right. they're Stay home and tune in to something that's eight dollars and right. that's how you can fiscally think of stuff but i think what's going to happen is truthfully between you guys is new york city's going to open people are going to want to feel touched right and then after a while there's going to be a point where people think of like what's the fiscal that i have to work with at the moment like i might have to like not spend as much here so you might see a deduction in memberships and more people going to credits and right. stuff like that but i think the pivot is really just going to be what people stay with this post COVID and what people are just like, okay, that was COVID. Now I'm back. And I think, right. that's gonna, I think that's what's going to happen. I think a lot of people will just be like, okay, where my bread and butter is really going to be in the hybrid mode. Like I'm going right. to teach in studio. And then I'm, I have this thing that I'm so grateful for that has started through this that I'm going to give a hundred percent as well. Do you think that some studios will do what, what you're just saying? So, I mean, I know grit would be a little hard, but if you're, you know, if you're not going to make the class, but you have the equipment already, the camera is in on Anthony teaching at four o'clock at, you yeah. know, so-and-so, and they're broadcasting it live for a membership fee. So you get the best of both worlds. You see that going there. Yeah, I, I see it going there. I think it's going to be a thing that, Certain studios will do that well, and then certain studios, it's really more about being in the space at that time. So I can see something like a soul doing great at that. Like you're at home, you turn your lights off in your room, you have a candle lit, and you spin, right? That's an easy right. to transition at. But, and I love all these studios, but your berries and your rumble and your grit and, you know, those gyms that are your boutique fitness studios that have so much energy in that room and switching between modality and modality i think that's going to be hard but if you sit in one spot yeah if i'm on a bike and i'm looking into the camera i'll be right. like, when i have to move modality i think that's where somebody's going to be like fuck well i'm just still in my house you know? i know you, you know it's funny it's funny one of our viewers right now olivia said you know she doesn't think new york's going to be open until july I, I don't necessarily disagree with you i think it's probably right. 60 to 90 days so that will give us to her point though what she's saying i think it's going to give people a lot of time to figure out maybe there is some type of solution for the multiple modality fitness that we just haven't thought of yet and maybe i hope it's out there you know i really do i hope yeah. that the two modality or three is going to be rough particularly if it's a cardiovascular third modality that's going to be very difficult to yeah. do. But I think the two modalities and the one modality will have a much easier time to your point. But you just answered question five. 
which was, you did, which was, how do you see the New York City scene, you know, post COVID, but I think we're discussing it now. Yes. Yeah, I think New York City is going to have so going just slightly back to that, I think the post, the, the multiple modality with all the polls that have kind of taken it being like, hey, how do you like shadow hit? They're like, if it's minimal equipment and I don't have to feel like I have too much in between time, then I'm fine with it. But when I feel like I have this major lag, that's when it gets a little confusing. I think things like Peloton tread are really simple. The dumbbells are in the tread. You can essentially right. stop the tread and work out in that setting. So I think that's something that might, be beneficial to people but i also i know some people out there who are like hey i need simple and effective and i also know a lot of people i would say 25 to 30 percent of the market who take group fitness in new york just to get lost their day is yeah. really hard oh, with you. to escape and sometimes yes. it's at home right like yes sometimes they need to escape from i don't mean to be this person but like their relationships and the stuff going on inside their house sometimes they're like well i just need to get in the studio with the lights low and just get and that's why i think something like soul you turn a candle on, you turn your lights off in your room, you can get yeah. lost. And tell the kids to leave me alone. Yeah. Come, <laughs> yeah. In, this, leave me alone. come in this room, you're grounded until eighth grade. Yeah, exactly. Okay? Yeah, you're more grounded you. than this. And I think just finishing that last thing is like New York, I think will go into a condensed schedule with less people in a class more times a day, potentially, right? Um, but I don't see it getting back to full capacity until September. October. Yeah, no. I've heard. I've heard. I've heard August. I've heard September, yeah. for sure. Um, listen, I have an idea for you that we can yeah. share right here live. Um, you're doing a little bit of shadow boxing and boxing in your workouts. Yes, maybe once a week, do a 15 minute boxing intro if you're not already doing it. Yeah. So these are all the cool things that are happening that I can't really announce yet. Ah! today, but um, that's going to be all as an option on a pre-recorded option on something that's coming soon. Needless to say, I love. Uh, it. I love. I it. want to know because I know you have some of our grit fam. Yeah, like sweet little Jill, Mark, yes. Dan, Jill and oh, Max, Jill and Air, uh, Max, everyone. So happy about that. Yeah. Um, and I was uh, wanted to hear about your Friday workouts that you guys are doing yeah. donation based. So if you can give us a little bit of insight on that where we can go, what we can do to be a part of that. And the benefit of giving back. I think you can close yeah. it out with that, Anthony. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So the Friday at five is kind of just something we were like, hey, let's throw a charity class. Cause like we miss hanging out. We were doing so many Zooms between the five of us and we were like, all right, like, yeah, why not? Yeah. So we essentially put this charity class together. Uh, I lost my uncle when I was little to AIDS. So Broadway Cares, Equity Fights AIDS has always been a big thing for me. It was when I was performing, that was like my first transition into the city was doing a thing called Broadway Bears. And then from there, I was like, okay, cool. Like this is a really easy transition for that. And then I have so many friends who work in healthcare and Dan and Max and Joe and Mark have so many clients yes. that work in healthcare that we were like, okay, cool. Let's get meals to first responders. So we partnered with a uh, Jersey local food prep company um, and they've been essentially doing first responder meals. And that's really been it. We've essentially, it's, 55 minutes, five trainers. We each do two rounds each, kind of of our own flavor and style. Yeah, boom, boom. And it's just been easy and seamless. And it's kind of a way that, like, with grit being shut down at the moment, a lot of people who are just like, man, I, like, I miss just, like, kind of leaving Max's class and seeing Dan or leaving Jill's yes. class and seeing Anthony and, like, just bumping into people where you can bump into somebody in the room. And it's completely free. It's I also never put a price limit on the donation. I'm kind of like, if it's a dollar, it's a dollar. And if it's a thousand dollars, we don't get anything of it. They literally donate to the links that are there. We don't even know. I mean, we know from the company. So we raised over $3,500 in two weeks with Broadway Bears. Um, yeah. And with the meals, I, I know they're like over, you know, X amount. But right. that number is, we'll get that at the end maybe. But like, for us, it's kind of like, cool. These are two charities that we're working with. And if you have time to contribute, that's like how you can pay us for this class. Absolutely. Um, well, and, and they're dear to your heart. They're yeah, dear to your heart us, too. You know? We're not giving away, you know, I'm not teaching for 50 minutes by myself. It's like, I do two rounds. I'm like, yeah, and then Jill does two rounds, and then Matt does two rounds. So it's like, we're not exerting a crazy amount of energy. Right. It's so much fun. And like, I think the best part too is like, the people who normally rock with Max or rock with Jill or rock with Dan or Mark or me are all in one room. And that's what's like the best thing, you know. Well, and it's unique. Yeah. Because that's not normally the way the online studio works, is it? 
No. Like you're all wherever you are. Right. Yeah, and that's kind of been like the best part of this online transition has been like, we can have these conversations. There's can be a community watching it and they don't have to all be in one sit down location. Love and it. I think yeah. that's what's gonna really hybrid after this. I think conferences like this, like if you ever have an open space and I can be like, hey, Chan, do you wanna come on this conference? I can have you on a screen. You know, it can't be this thing where like, well, you gotta fly to New York for this. It's like, yeah, like you set up your camera like you are right now. And like, you guys can be in this panel. And that's a really cool way that things can get done. Well, isn't it an interesting pivot right there? That's a huge one. I know, but, but the struggle is real for the people that love to hug. Yeah. <laughs> I'm like, just, you know, you, I just went to the grocery store and I saw somebody I knew and I was like, oh. Yeah, I know. Well, that's so where, hard. That's where New York City fitness comes back in. People want to be touched. And that's yes. why people will go back I don't think it's ever going to be like, we're never going to go back because people love, I mean, people's love languages. Some people are touch. Some people words of affirmation, whatever it is. It is. Nah. But yeah. some people just need to be connected with. And I think it'll, it'll be a, a, a fire drill when we first start, people like slamming in. But then I think from there is where you really gauge. I'd love to have this conversation like six months from now. Yes. And like, cool. Okay. So like we've moved, we've gotten through COVID and now like the pivot was this, but like what is now the next traction like right. do we think that things are going to go right back to where they were or do we think this new hybrid market is going to be like the entrance way for like going forward yeah i think price point's going to have a lot to do with the online stuff but you yeah. know when you think like october i think the price point of the online stuff is going to make a big difference um are people going to go underneath the live stuff are they going to keep it the same it, it's just going to be really interesting to see so i think we come back and revisit this in october yeah and have this conversation again referencing this interview and i think that would be pretty cool but going back really quickly they can find the uh the five of five for 55 donation base workout on your instagram correct? yeah so it's on my it's one on my instagram i have stories up all the time i send emails out so if anybody's not on the email list they can just dm me and i can add them to the email list and then okay. that just essentially gets in that way yeah okay perfect. now where else where else can people find you or is that good what is it where else can people find you are you good oh, with instagram? yeah so instagram or um my website www.anthonygrishellyfitness.com um and then some new ones that are coming soon. <laughs> <laughs> That's yeah. awesome. Hey, I know you're a busy boy. You probably have to sleep at some point. I know you got to work out. I you got five and six. Work. I got five and six then. So like I'm a, I'm on deck. <laughs> All right. Well, good. Well, you got 20 minutes to take a deep breath, get a snack, and uh, thank you for your time, AC. No, thank you. I appreciate thank it, you. guys. And yeah. also, reach, it doesn't have to always be this. Just text me or call me. Like, I would love to just... Yes! Like, All right. <laughs> hey, I pump love each, it. Pump each other up. I love yes. it. Yes! Well, right, here's brother. our virtual fist bump. Yes, guys. I'll see you soon. All right. Thanks take so care. Much. Have a good night. Thank you Bye, so much.